Hey, Mike Golick here, and you all know I talk for a living, but while we all talk, there are millions of skilled workers out there, like construction workers or utility repairmen or solar technicians, who make their living as doers. They keep the lights on, the roads paved, the water flowing. They're the unsung heroes who keep the world moving. Look around you. Pretty much anything that's part of modern civilization is all thanks to skilled workers. They make it happen. In fact, this podcast might not even exist or get to the audience without skilled workers to provide electricity and run server centers and build devices. For all the doers out there, Timberland Pro has the hypercharged work boot. It's designed for optimal performance and comfort and anti-fatigue technology delivers underfoot comfort for long days on the job site. It has a composite safety toe powered by carbon shield technology and stable stride technology to help keep you steady on uneven surfaces. The hypercharged work boot is comprised of premium, full-grain, waterproof leather with a waterproof membrane and breathable and moisture-wicking lining. It even has antimicrobial treatment for odor control. It's a must-have boot for doers. There are talkers and there are doers. Timberland Pro. Always do. Never done. Are you hiring? With Indeed, you can post a job in minutes, set up screener questions, then zero in on your short list of qualified candidates using an online dashboard. Get started today at Indeed.com slash podcast. That's Indeed.com slash podcast. This is the best of Golik and Wingo podcast. Good Thursday morning, everybody. Welcome in to another edition of Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN2 for the first two hours of the show. Mike Golick, Trey Wingo here with you. Junior is off wandering about the streets of Philadelphia. Yes, he is. I'm a little concerned. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're playing Maroon 5 because apparently Maroon 5 is going to be the Super Bowl act. They're going to be the halftime act for the yeah. Super Bowl, which will be in Atlanta this year. And I, I listen, you're never universally going to get 100% of the people to say, oh, that was a fan. Fantastic choice. Can confirm. You did so well there, NFL. Yeah. This one obviously is getting some blowback as well. I, I'm a fan of Maroon 5. I, I don't get too crazy about who I hear as the... Uh, I'm, I'm a lover of all genres of, of music. I you really celebrate am. the entire collection, I do, the entire, Mike. the entire catalog. So <laughs> it, it really doesn't matter to me. I like Maroon 5, so I have no problem with this. I understand some people do. But as I said, this is going to happen at least... At least the age bracket has maybe gone down some. If that was one fault I had, you know, after the uh, wardrobe malfunction and, and some other things that, that have gone on, they, they seem to want, go to the really, really, really kind of older kind of groups coming Neutral. back. Yeah. A little blowback, by the way, that, that there's not a, uh, there's not an Atlanta based yep. artist. Yep. But by the way, plenty of time for that still to be added. Yeah. You never the, know who's going to, gonna, who's going to jump in and, and be part of it. You don't know, but. Overall, I'm fine with it. I, I, I guess I don't give it, I don't sit there and really analyze it to, to How really go dare thee. crazy one way or yeah. the other on that. So, it, you, you fine with them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you have a favorite of Super Bowl act, halftime act that you remember? I mean, Bruce Springsteen was pretty special. Springsteen. Uh, Bruno Mars at, at Bruno Mars is such a great entertainer. Good. Beyonce He's, in 47 yeah. was really, really good. Um, Prince in the Rain. That yeah, Prince Prince's Prince's guitar solo yeah. in Super Bowl Forty One was fantastic. You know who else would have been a great Super Bowl halftime act? Who's that? Sir Elton John. Elton John sitting there with the piano. How yeah. was that last night? Great. It was really yeah. really good. We went to the concert last night. Uh, ran into Boomer. That's something. He was sitting I, like I again, two rows away from me. I again didn't realize he was out touring, and I guess it's the last time because yeah, I saw him. Me and my wife saw him a couple years ago in Vegas doing yeah. doing the Vegas thing on a resident there. Uh, it's fantastic though, Big, because oh as God. I said yesterday, you walk away from some concert saying, "Oh, I wish they had played this hit or that hit." Yeah. Every song's a hit that he plays, exactly. So you're not going to get every single one of them because no. he has too many of them. Uh, yeah, it was, it was the farewell Yellow Brick Road tour. Ah, the place okay. was sold out. Was really, really good. But I did run into Boomer. I went up to him. The first thing he said to me is, "Go to bed. Go to bed." Which, <laughs> to which bed. you did eventually. I did. I, I unfortunately because you know my undying commitment to you in this show. Yeah, uh, I could not stay for the entire. Well, my time. commitment to you, I, I yeah. said you know we were never going to golf, but it was your birthday. We yesterday, did, so we golfed together. We did, and we put that picture up, and people were like, "Oh, great prom date." Picture. Yeah, <laughs> and and I struggled out of the tee box. You, you, you put, try yeah, to help me. You're getting there. You're getting I, I appreciate there. that. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll get we'll get my we'll guy to, to set you up and we'll, we'll figure little, this out. Little help out off Tiba. It's a, I, as I as I found out, it's a lot better to hit out of the fairway yes. than the rough. Yeah, I don't you hate people that say, "Oh, the game is really all about uh, chipping and putting." No, if you can't get off the tee, the game is misery. Yeah, when I'm moving it's my ball misery. around the roots of trees yes. that I'm around there, it, the frustration sets in. When, when the phrase is, "Hey, take it off that rock so yeah. you don't break your wrist," <laughs> exactly, the game is no fun. I heard too many times from Trey hey, Golick, "Move it off the root." or away from that rock. We're not on the tour <laughs> yeah. here. Nobody's I'm getting like, their card today. My thoughts exactly. Uh, Foot wedge. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's the best club in my bag. By the way, you you are amazing with that 56, 56. degree wedge. I got that down. Seriously, Stanzik, mm-hmm. you, you don't want to get you don't want to take a money match with him. If, not around if, the green. Has to be up and down. Mm-hmm. He was pretty impressive. I'm yeah, not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie. We got a lot to get to tonight. Yeah, we do. Uh, it is uh, week three of the NFL. Is it? Is it the time? Do we think this is going to be the time tonight for Cleveland? Oh boy! Plus, we got color rush. It's all. It's all so excited. We got so much to get to. Let's start with what's trending, and we'll start in baseball. And I don't know if anybody is hotter right now than Yasiel Puig. Swing and a line drive deep left center field. Back is Blackman. It is gone. Just to the left of dead center. Yasiel Puig, a pinch hit. Three-run homer, and the Dodgers lead 5-2. That's the call on Rocks from Roxy Bernstein on ESPN Radio as Puig's home run with two on and one out in the bottom of the seventh started a, a 5-2 or ignited a 5-2 win in a three-game sweep over the Rockies. Mike putting the Dodgers to a season-best two and a half games now ahead of the National League West with only nine games remaining, and they're done playing the Rockies. Yeah, they're they're sitting in pretty good shape right now. Yes, they so, are. Good job out of him. Uh, Walker Bueller, 24 years old. Uh, is the second youngest Dodger pitcher with 10 strikeout game since Clayton Kershaw, September 4th, 2011, when he was 23 years old and some change. So a uh, nice job by the youngster there, Yasiel Puig, saying after we're going to win the West, uh, making that prediction. Uh, and it looks like they're setting up in pretty good po- uh, position. Again, nine games ago, two and a half game lead. Not like it's a lock by any stretch at this point. But uh, a nice job with that last series against Colorado. Listen, no one is hotter than Puig now. He's homered in six of his last 18 at-bats. And the Dodgers' sweep of the Rockies is what everybody's talking about, and that's brought to you by Capital One. Capital One is reimagining banking, offering accounts with no fees or minimums that can be opened in five minutes. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Capital One N.A. We continue with what's trending, and Jimmy Butler is trending to leaving Minnesota. He told the team's president of basketball operations and coach Tom Thibodeau that he would like to be traded before reporting for Timberwolves media day on Monday and prefers the possibility of the Clippers as well as the New York Knicks, according to league sources. Butler told the Timberwolves he planned to leave the franchise in free agency next summer anyway, so he's basically saying, Mike, you might as well get something for me. Well, you know, we heard there was some turmoil here with and a little bit of, from what people say, dysfunction with that organization, and we'll hear from uh, Adrian Wojnarowski about about some of that and, and what's gone, going on there. And that Butler wanting out. Listen, that's nothing new. We've gone through it with Kawhi Leonard and others that they say they want out and they give specific teams to go to. And then also he's going to be a free agent after. So there, there are number situations. If he is not traded and then he goes as a free agent, the most he can get is four for 140. If he is traded before the season starts and then re-signs with that team, he can get five for 190. So. An extra fifty million dollars if he's traded now and then resigns with the team that he's traded to. So he certainly wants to be traded uh, right now. Uh, I, I think there's a little resistance in Minnesota to do it because uh, Tom Thibodeau, the head coach, knows who's also the president of basketball operations. He knows that he's not going to get back fair value for no. that, and that team's going to be worse this year. And that he he may be out of a job. But you're getting, and I don't hear a lot of people say, oh, we're so sick of the players. That Listen, the players have leverage right now. The players have power right now, and they wield it. The interesting thing to me is, boy, he waited a while, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, Thibodeau was going to meet with him in Minnesota. They ended up, the meeting supposedly was supposed to be then in L.A. on the West Coast. And this is kind of late now. Now, with, with him, with uh, Butler saying, by Monday, by media day. You know, I mean, that's, that's not a whole lot of time. I don't know how long behind the scenes this has been brewing but now to be public, that's not a lot of time to try and get this thing done. And again, he wants to go to either the Clippers, the Knicks, or the Nets. The Nets have a couple of spots, uh, max spots available. The Clippers will as well. And that looks to be maybe where Kawhi Leonard might go. They might team up. But you certainly don't hear, I want to go to the Lakers. Right. <laughs> are, are you surprised about no, that? I, I mean, I think you start to hear more and more that stars, other stars, some don't want to play with LeBron. That he gets the lion's share of everything. Usually you're on a good team, but... You know, that they just would rather not be under under that cloud or in that vacuum. I don't know how true it all is, but 
You know, there's a read, Kawhi Leonard. You know, I, it doesn't sound like he's going to end up there. Right. Uh, and, and and Jimmy Butler never even made mention of going there. Well, it's interesting, too, because what have we seen in the recent uh, player trends in the NBA is that everyone wants to go to the Warriors, right? Everyone wants to play. I mean, they get everybody and somehow all these stars <laughs> tend to work. Now, now, I get it that LeBron as a figure and as a player – is is a larger planet than say oh without Steph, question Steph Curry oh it's not even in my opinion not yeah. even close the, right. the the gravitational pull from LeBron but but it, it is interesting that people are willing to go there and find a way to work with yeah. all those stars yeah. in Golden State and for whatever reason we can't get a second superstar to good go or bad along with LeBron. I think good or bad there's no working it's LeBron's team I think right. everybody understands that you want to say good or bad he's been to how many you know finals in a row and he's won a number 7, of them as well I believe. so I mean there has been some you know fruits to the labor there but uh, there are some that that don't want to be involved in that Kyrie Irving was one of them yeah. you know who had won a title there and then wanted to move on in Cleveland so for a money perspective uh Butler can sign the max extension with the Timberwolves next summer or sign a four-year, $141 million deal with a new team. So what exactly is going to happen? Our NBA insider, Adrian Wojnarowski, tries to break it down. Geography. These are big market teams and major metro cities, and these are teams that will have, you know, Brooklyn and the Clippers, for instance, have a chance to bring in two max players in free agency next summer. But the willingness of those teams to get involved with Jimmy Butler when they have the space to sign him next summer, those kinds of teams who can sign him outright in the summer, they're going to be reluctant to give up significant assets or maybe any assets at all to get him right now. Why Butler would want to go there and sign? Because he could get five years, $190 million versus four years, $140 million if he just leaves Minnesota and signs with them this summer. Financially, it makes better sense for him to get traded there now. It makes financially better sense for him to get traded there now, but what is, like, it's not the greatest thing in the world for Thibodeau any way you look at no, it. No, it's not. And, and here's the difference of like the NFL and the NBA is if you're the Clippers, you're the Knicks, or you're the Nets, why are you giving up assets? Right. To get a get guy. Him for free. And then you'd have to pay him 190, or, right. or you have to pay him 190 if you trade for him now. Yep. And then re-sign him as opposed to if he's a free agent next year. You can only pay him one price. Right. Then it's four for 140. Then it's going to come down to where he wants to go. And he's mentioned all those places, especially the places that have the two max slots. So are you going to give up, uh, assets for him and then have to pay him 40 and pay him for an extra year and another $50 million along the way or just wait till he's a free agent where you are gambling a little bit? A little Because bit. you're dealing with a couple other teams that want his services However, as well. However, y- you know who you're gambling with, right? Because he sort of put those parameters out there right now. So right. It's a risk, but it's not as much of a risk if there was an unknown about what he wanted yeah. to do. So you're right. The timing of this is a little weird. And, and if you're the Timberwolves, you're like, really? Yeah. This hey, thanks. Again, appreciate it one more time. <laughs> Meanwhile, speaking of one more time. Tiger. Oh, he looked good. Yeah, I got a Tiger folder, okay? Oh, Tigre. Tiger, Tiger Woods, yo. Final tour event of the season starts today. And Tiger Woods, one of 30 golfers set to tee off at the Tour Championship today at East Lake Golf Club in Atlanta. Woods, who is ranked 20th in the Fed Cup standings, uh, FedEx Cup standings, excuse me, tees off at 1230 Eastern alongside Tommy Fleetwood. But of course, there are five people, Mike, that control their own destiny here. Uh, these top five players, if they win the FedEx Cup, or with, well, actually, if they win the Tour Championship, will win yeah, the FedEx Cup right. and the $10 million that comes with it. It's Bryson DeChambeau, Justin Rose, Dustin Johnson, Justin Thomas, and our guy! Yep. Tony Fino. So they win, they get the extra ten mil. Plus, by the way, the purse of the this particular tournament, yeah, which is like, the over a million dollars. Exactly. It's like uh, the million dollars yeah. is nothing to sneeze at, but yeah. you focus on the ten million as opposed to the paltry one point six. Uh, that's exactly right. right. That's when the golfer t- gives tells the caddy, "Hey, I'll yeah. give you the prize money of a mil, something like yeah. that." Uh, but yeah, I, so those guys, it makes it easy if they win, which makes me want somebody else to win, and then we want a little bit of cha- chaos to ensue here. Tiger has. I think virtually no shot of yeah. winning the whole the ten million dollars no. certainly can win the tournament possibly. I mean, technically yes, uh, but reality no. Yeah, so anybody but those five win it, now we're getting into different uh scenarios of who's gonna win the ten million dollars. So the other thing here, Jordan Spieth apparently has uh come to a resolution with the PGA Tour for missing his 25th event. Right. So, Because uh, otherwise it would be a penalty right. because they didn't plan enough events. Amazingly how for one of the stars of the sport, Mike, they found a way for a resolution to be done. You know how that works. Better yeah, you are. Exactly. The more you can do and the longer you can stay and do stuff. So that kicks off today. We'll see what happens and who walks away, not only with the paltry one plus something million for the tournament, but also the ten million. For ten big ones. Ben X Cup. Week three of the NFL. Jets and Browns kick it off tonight in Cleveland. The Browns, 
looking to end that 19-game winless streak dating back to Christmas Eve 2016. It's a short week where they got rid of Josh Gordon. Meanwhile, the Jets come in with a rookie quarterback, and the Jets are actually an underdog on the road here, Mike. This is interesting. Uh, I think the Browns were favored one time last year against the Colts. Right now they're favored, uh, according to Westgate, out in Vegas, and if that holds, it will be the first time since that one against the Colts. Uh, so we'll, we'll see if it holds. I, I don't see why it wouldn't, uh, yeah. that, that, that wouldn't hold and they would be the favorite. And I hear a lot of people saying, you know, from, from New York, oh, this should be a jet win. You know, this is one that they have to circle. I'd say not so fast. Yeah. That Cleveland defense is playing extremely well right now. This one's at home. It's a, I, I do think it's a matter of time before Cleveland wins. This, this could turn out to be a pretty good game, quite honestly. Mike, they could easily be 2-0. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be, if you want to look at it honestly, the Cleveland Browns could easily be 2-0. They had a chip shot field goal in overtime to win week one. Right. My God, they had a million opportunities Tons. to win week two. Somehow it didn't work out. But it's funny, I'm reading these stories uh, about Cleveland, and a lot of them saying, is this a must win for them? They haven't won yeah. since 2016. Every game is a must win for the Cleveland Browns. Two good shots. You know, you got New York at home this week, and then next week you're at Oakland. Yeah. I mean, who, who is, certainly isn't playing all that well right now, so... Be interesting for Cleveland to, yeah. to, you know, break the chains, open the coolers, and get a little dilly dilly going. Oh, again, Bud Light. Again, Bud Light has put, uh, uh, Bud Light in, in, in coolers across bars in Cleveland with locks on it. Right. And they're, they, whenever Cleveland wins, whenever that is, and twice we thought those coolers were going to be opened, um, whatever is there is, is free to everybody who yep. gets there first. So that means if Cleveland wins tonight, the workday will be sluggish tomorrow. It, let's just say <laughs> people will be showing up around noon saying, what happened? Happened. We won. <laughs> All I know is that uh, a good thing happened, and then I don't remember yeah, a lot of what that, happened yeah. after that. So we'll see what happens. Should be a good game tonight uh, between the Browns and the Jets, as it is Sam Darnold uh, and company uh, going there on a short week. Okay, Golik and Wingo presented by Progressive Insurance with more than thirty unique coverage options available. Progressive, no small business. Learn more at progressivecommercial.com. dot com. And, uh, Mike, then the story in the NBA that a lot of people are talking about this morning. Mavericks owner Mark Cuban has agreed to contribute $10 million to women's organizations, but won't face any other punishment, stemming from what NBA Commissioner Adam Silver called a disturbing and heartbreaking allegations of harassment and violence towards female employees within his organization. The league announced Wednesday this was the result of their internal investigation, Mike, after that Sports Illustrated article uh, came out in February, which talked about uh, numerous things that were on there, including former CEO and President Tadorma Usury uh, having all kinds of harassment issues and a couple of other employees that had a, a bunch of problems as well. Yeah, one of the uh, the comments from one of the lead investigators said that Cuban didn't know many details of allegations because he was rarely in the club's business office, which is housed away from the home arena and basketball operations. But when issues were brought to Cuban's attention, it was said he erred by not acting swiftly. That's what the report said. So first and foremost, I think uh, I think the number Cuban had put at it was like five times in the last number of many years that he was even in that building right. where the business operations are. He is normally over where the basketball is going on. You, you know he's that type of guy and been there. Correct. And many will say, and, and certainly to an extent, you know, that's not an excuse for not knowing what's going on with your company. But you also leave other people to run the company. You delegated, basically. And, 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 that got burned for it, but there were situations, and I thought Rachel Nichols did a great job basically reading from the report of things that Cuban did know about in a couple of instances, whether it was the former ticket sales employee, Chris Hyde, or the website, uh, the, the web uh, um, uh, reporter, reporter, Earl Sneed, Earl Sneed which was horrific, those things. Issues. And with Chris Snyde, it was pornographic stuff and other things that went on that Cuban was a part of. And there is no doubt he didn't act the correct, A, swiftly enough, or B, the right way in that one uh, as far as getting rid of those employees. So while he was kind of given a pass is a wrong word by the investigation itself from the NBA, them saying that, that invest, the investigation, he is not really responsible. We're not d- saying he needs to be disciplined in this. But there were situations that he knew about that he did not act as he should have acted. And he, he admitted it, yeah. but you know he admitted it a, a little after the fact, I'd say. Well, you know, one of the things that he said he did know about was Earl Sneed in one of the situations. He was the, the, the man that is more than one occasion accused of domestic violence <clears throat> against uh, someone he was dating. 
Uh, and one of the reasons that he said he didn't uh, decide to fire him, uh, he said, listen, I was afraid he'd go do it somewhere else again, so I wanted to keep him here and have him do counseling. And then Re- Rachel Nichols asked the great question on, on the jump, which was, why didn't you fire him and then pay for counseling? Yeah, that's exactly you know? right. Uh, that's so exactly right. Yeah, so a lot of questions uh, still to go on about what what happened and, and what goes fo- forward. But here's part of uh, Mark Cuban uh, with Rachel Nichols on the jump. First, just an apology to the women involved, the women that in a couple of cases were assaulted, and, and not just to them, but their, their families, because this is not something that just is an incident and then it's over. It, it stays with people, it stays with families, and, and I'm just sorry I didn't see it. And again, Adam Silver saying, as Mark has acknowledged, he is ultimately responsible for the culture and conduct of his employees. Well, nothing will undo the harm caused by a select few former employees of the Mavericks. The workplace reforms and the $10 million that Mark has agreed to contribute are important steps toward rectifying this past behavior and shining a light on a pervasive societal failing, the inability of too many organizations to provide a safe and welcoming workplace for women. Well, you know, what, what's going to come down is, was enough done to Mark Cuban? Or, or right. should should something have been done to Mark Cuban? He offered up the $10 mil. He wasn't fined. $10 million. He offered up the $10 million and he was not disciplined. Should he have been disciplined? You know, well, should, what do we always say that, uh, you know, you have the ultimate responsibility? Yeah. Right? And, and he says he has the ultimate responsibility. Um, you know, especially, you know, we haven't even talked about the CEO and president with Terdemer Ussery. Right. And, and basically, I mean, just the women that feared being around there, uh, in right. the culture that was there, but for Cuban to be actively involved in the Chris Hyde situation, with the pornography at the desk, and then later with the condom. I mean, it, it's, it, it, yeah. it, it's ridiculous what went on, and what he said about that, and that he was wrong. And then, and then, really, I mean, the, the Earl Sneed one, where he was accused of of domestic violence, of beating a, a woman, and Mark Cuban admitted. He goes, "I just, I only got his side of it. I didn't get the woman's side of it. Left him in there with some precautions and, and things, and then started dating someone within the building there. And the same thing happened. The same thing happened. And then still, you know, didn't fire him because basically that just to what you said. Well, maybe I could, I, if he, if I fire him, what's he going to go out and he's going to do that to someone else? I want to get him counseling to which again, as you said, Rachel said, fire him and still get him counseling, which right. would have been the way to go. And, and Mark Cuban admitted, he said, I absolutely made mistakes there. So did he, should he have been disciplined? I yeah. think that's the question coming out of this is the atmosphere was horrific for the Mavericks for a while, horrible for the women to, to be there. Uh, and Mark Cuban did know of some things and didn't act swiftly enough even that he admitted. So people are wondering, should there have been some, some discipline for Mark Cuban? Well, And then there was the other part of the human resources director, Buddy Pittman, who was basically – uh, a guy that that Mark Cuban put in there, and they felt like going to Buddy Pittman wasn't anything because he was friends with with Cuban, and right? Then nothing was going to happen. Nothing there. was happening, so yeah. they're like, okay, why are we even why saying we anything keep anymore? Going? Yeah. yeah. So look, bad those, culture. Those are questions that'll that'll have to be answered by by future behavior yeah. going forward, and we'll see what happens. Golick, Golick, and Wingo, and Wingo, mm-hmm. Trey Wingo, and Mike Golick Senior. We're delighted to be joined by a guy who knows the NFL, who knows New York. He's our own Chris Candy from ESPN New York's 98.7, then drafted by the Dallas Cowboys, won a Super Bowl with the New York Giants before finishing up his career with the Baltimore Ravens, and now, like Scrooge McDuck, sleeps at night on bags of money. Uh, Chris, thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, first and foremost, I want to play for you something that Damian Woody said about the Giants and specifically about Eli Manning, and I want to get your reaction to it. Eli Manning is... Toast. <laughs> he is <laughs> toast. Here we go. Okay, listen. When you look at Eli Manning and, and that Giants offense, he needs like the perfect storm. He needs everything, the environment perfect. He needs the protection to be perfect. He has the weapons. He has the you know running back. All those things. But that's not the nature of the National Football League. There's going to be times where you got to make plays off platform, off schedule. Chris, your thoughts? Well, that sounds good, Trey and Mike, but we all know that it's hard to play quarterback when you're not upright. And through the first two weeks of the regular season, no quarterback has been sacked more times with less than two and a half seconds in the pocket than Eli Manning. So the reality is he doesn't have time to operate the offense. I don't care who you are, if you're Tom Brady, if you're Aaron Rodgers, if you don't have time to be able to throw the football, 
if your protection is consistently breaking down, then your quarterback is not going to be able to be effective. He's not going to be accurate. Things are not going to be on time. And so I think with Eli Manning, we've seen this over the last couple of seasons, his protection breaking down on him. All of the hits, all of the pressure has an accumulative effect. And right now, Eli Manning is feeling that pressure. It's going to be hard for the Giants' offense to get on track. Certainly higher expectations for the Giants this year than last year. One of the big reasons is Odell Beckham Jr. is back on the field. In your opinion, watching this team, Chris, what part of this ball club did you expect to be better that is not? The offensive line. And that's because they had four new starters from a year ago. Now, John Jalapio, their center, he's out for the year with a broken leg, so they're going to have John Greco step in. But everybody has been selling us that the offensive line for the New York Giants would be drastically improved. We saw Pat Shermer do that a couple of off-seasons ago in Minnesota when he retooled that offensive line. He brought in two free agents to play tackle and draft to the center, and that worked out for that group. And so they thought that they would be able to potentially do that here. And then, of course, adding the running back, Saquon Barkley, with the second overall pick, the offense would be able to have more balance. It'd be more dynamic. It just hasn't all worked out because your offensive line is so bad. Well, that that is true, Chris. But listen, this uh, this this stat blew my mind when we when we looked this up the other day. The New York Giants have gone thirty four games in the NFL without scoring thirty points. Thirty four straight games. That can't just be about the offensive line. Well, I, I don't understand why you would think it'd be about something else, Trey. Right? If you don't have guys up front that can block, your offense is going to be inconsistent. That's why we see the New York Giants over the last three seasons. They'll have splash plays offensively. You'll see. The- the long touchdowns to Beckham, you'll see those big plays in the passing game, but you haven't seen consistency. You haven't seen this team be able to put together 8, 10, 12-play drives consistently, and that's because your offensive line is so leaky that it allows the defense to create negative plays and it keeps you from being able to have any sustained offense. So that's why you haven't seen the Giants score 30 points in 34 games. That's the reality of it. It ain't fantasy football. you got to have big guys up front. That can block. If you don't have that, you have no offense. So before we move on to the Jets and their game tonight, one more for me about the Giants. So, I mean, basically, are we saying the rest of this year there is basically no hope for a winning season? Well, here's what I'll say. I think Pat Shermer has to fix his offense. He's got to tweak what everything uh, – he's got to tweak the things that they thought they would be able to do coming into this year based on the improvements that they thought they made with the offensive line. I think it's got to be more about the quick passing game, being able to throw those smokes, those bubbles out to wide receivers and see if they can make somebody miss one-on-one in space. I think they got to incorporate more screen game. But ultimately, it becomes about getting the ball out of the quarterback's hands as quickly as possible because you've seen the protection break down consistently around them. So I think they've got to tweak some things. They're going to have to do it on the fly. You know, you probably practice all off-season OTAs, mini camp, and training camp with a certain offense in mind. But they're going to have to change their plan because the offensive line hasn't performed to the standard that they thought it would. Well, that's certainly been number one problem for the Giants. There's no question about it. Okay, let's move on as Chris Candy is with us from ESPN New York 98.7 FM to the Jets tonight. They're in Cleveland. They're a three-point dog to a team that hasn't won since Christmas Eve of 2016. People are saying this is a must-win game for the Browns. Quite frankly, every game, as you know, is a must-win game for the Browns. But more importantly, is this a must-win game for the Jets? Well, I think it is. If you want the young team to buy into all of the things that Todd Bowles and Mike McCagden have been preaching in terms of culture, I think you have to have winning to be able to support that. And so we saw the Jets have a huge win a couple of weeks ago on Monday Night Football on the road against the Lions. And that was a great sign for a young team that couldn't find a way to win from a year ago. And, oh, by the way, their young quarterback bounced back from possibly the worst start to his NFL career on his first pass on a pick six. But when I looked at that game against the Lions, it all started with being able to stop the run on the defensive side of the ball. And if you saw what happened in week two against the Dolphins, they allowed a little, a little movement in the ground game by that Dolphins offense. So I think that that Jets defensive front has got to stop the run and make teams one dimensional. That's why you, that's when you'll start to see the takeaways. That's when you'll see the short fields and the extra possessions for that offense and that young quarterback. So outside of the quarterback, because we know Sam Darnold is the guy now for the future, what part of that team, it's kind of like the, the Giants question I'm asking you, what part of that team coming into this year has surprised you in a good way that has done even better than you thought they would? Well, you know what i got to say? It's the defense. I, I didn't think that the defense would be as good at taking the football away as um, you know some of the other defenses around the National Football League. But, I mean, the Jets 
they're impressive. Their ability to get after it defensively and, and really create some havoc and, and create those extra, extra possessions, that, that's been the part that's probably impressed me the most. Uh, I know everybody wants to talk about the wide receivers group, how that group has kind of flashed in a way that we didn't think was possible with some of the names. But I, I would definitely say it has to be the defense's ability to be able to take the ball away. All right, Chris Candy with us, uh, former uh, Dallas Cowboy, New York Giant, and Baltimore Raven. Uh, Golik and Wingo and Chris Candy, by the way, on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on something that has obviously caught in a lot of people's attention, which is what happened last Sunday in Buffalo when Vontae Davis decided to retire at the half. Now, a lot of people, for a lot of obvious reasons, have said, what the heck was that? Vontae has come out and tried to explain his position on a couple of, of situations. He released a statement. He also did uh, did some work with uh, the undefeated here, uh, one of our websites here at ESPN. What's your thought on what you've heard from Vontae trying to explain his decision? Well, here's the thing, Trey. He didn't retwi- retire at halftime. He quit. That, that's what happened. I mean, when you talk about a game day roster, you know you have limited numbers. If you go into that game and you're healthy, you have, you have a responsibility to your teammates to be available for them and for that coaching staff. And the fact is, he made a selfish decision at halftime in deciding that he was no longer going to participate in that game. I, I'll always respect the player's right to be able to walk away from the game when, when you deem it necessary because you're responsible to your family and, and, and to the people that love you, first and foremost. But in that situation, you can't do that. There's a, there's a time and place, there's a way to do things. And Vontae Davis, uh, I mean, that, that's the ultimate betrayal of trust. And, and it's unfortunate that he did that in that situation. Like, I understand guys want to walk away when they want to walk away, but you can't do it at halftime. We have some quotes from Vontae Davis we'll get to in a minute. I want to ask you, let, let's switch sports real quickly. The thought of Jimmy Butler, what are people saying in New York that he uh, he put the Knicks and the Nets both uh, on the radar as, as teams he'd like to come to? Well, Jimmy Butler makes a whole lot of sense for the Knicks, but here's the thing. The, the organization has already come out and said they're not going to skip steps. They're not going to trade draft picks. They're not going to trade assets. So, I mean, if you look at that Knicks roster, you're probably not going to move any of, anybody on that team. I'm sure that the, the Minnesota Timberwolves aren't interested in any of those guys except for Christos Porzingis, but who's injured, and the Knicks would never trade him. But in looking at Jimmy Butler, it makes sense if you're the Knicks to wait until the 2019 offseason where you have maximum flexibility and you have an opportunity to make it run at several free agents. But I know that Jimmy Butler is probably not the, the priority in that 2019 offseason for the Knicks from what I understand is Kyrie Irving. Well, uh, Kyrie Irving would make a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. <laughs> How about it, huh? So we'll see if that uh, pans out. Chris, always good to talk to you this morning. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on, guys. Golick. Uh, I tell you what, a great sports night last night. Yeah. No doubt about it. And Wingo. What a day, what a show, what a time. One, two, three, four. Guys, let's be real. When you look good, you feel good. At the JCPenney wardrobe sale, you can get 50% off select men's suits, separate sport coats, dress pants, and accessories. Plus, select dress shirts, buy one, get one free. Raise your game with Collection by Michael Strahan. All the right looks to take your style to the next level. Also, save an extra 20% off with your JCPenney credit card and coupon or extra 15% off with any other method of payment. Hurry in. JCPenney, style and value for all. Pricing and coupon valid 913 and 923. Credit offer subject to credit approval. Some exclusions and restrictions apply. See store jcp.com for coupon and details. Support for the Golik and Wingo Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying homes for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a whole lot of anxiety with folks. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about it. They're calling it the power buying process, and here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. This gives you the strength of a cash buy. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all new exclusive rate shield approval. First, they lock your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. Now here's the best part. If rates go up, your rate stays the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. You win either way. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Golic. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data record, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org, number 3030. 
All right, guys, book it. You know the drill. You add yep. book it to any of your hot mm-hmm. take. It's a hot take multiplier. It allows you to feel like Stephen A. Smith, if only for a moment. You can book it. Here we go. Speaking of laser rocket arms, yeah. Patrick Mahomes will be named the AFC Offensive Player of the Week again this season. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I think you would book that. I mean, the, the... Wait, weren't you the one that was throwing water on the fire oh, no, that we no. were trying See, to build you, about? No, you guys are just changing guy. his tune. No, just he to... comes back from the doctor and suddenly he's a new guy. No. Book it. <laughs> Two of your idiots. Sports Center brought to you by Straight Talk yeah. Wireless. When a player doesn't like a contract, they hold out, right? Well, with Straight Talk Wireless, you never have to because there's no contract. They use the exact same 4G LTE towers as the big carriers, but for a lot less. Straight Talk Wireless, only at Walmart. Refer to terms and conditions of service at straighttalk.com. All right, Golik and Wingo with you. Reminding you, we'll be live from Philadelphia tomorrow and head of the uh, Colts-Eagles matchup, part of ESPN Radio's Fall Football Tour, brought to you by Ice Cold Dr. Mm. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville, although it was uh, birthed in Waco, Texas. All right, you ready to play a little book it? Let's book it. Junior's on the road. So uh, Debbie, Bubble Boy, is going to be doing the part of Junior with the read. So let's start it, Junior. All right, Debbie, here we go. We got some good ones. First one up, the Browns will get their first win and open the coolers tonight against the Jets. Book it. You can book it. You can book it. The color rush is on. The Doo Doo Brown Browns are going to get their win. The coolers will be open. The city will be flowing with Bud Light. And then work will be slow and slothful tomorrow in the, my hometown city of Cleveland, Ohio. Well, they've been slow and slothful on the field yes, for a while. I guess that's Mike. really redundant, slow and slothful, yeah, no, is well, it not? Yes, but you're just, you're just emphasizing yes, it. You're, yes. It's a point of emphasis for you. Is what it is. Like some of the rules in the NFL. But I'm booking it. I I am not in any way anti-Jets or anti-Sam Darnold, but it's been 633 days. Let's book this. You can book it. Let's make this the night that the long-suffering Cleveland fans finally have something to be happy about. I hope there's a camera on top of every cooler. Yes. So when they finally get unlocked, we can see the mayhem. And and by the way, kudos to Bud Light for the absolute greatest promotional idea of all time. Amen to that. They just need it to actually happen at this point. Debbie. We're booking that one. What's next? Patrick Mahomes will break Peyton Manning's record of 55 touchdown passes this season. Book it. Wait, wait. This season? Yeah. Oh, stop it. Come on, people. He's playing great right now. I get it, but okay. Ease up. So, so you're not going to book that? No. Listen, uh, you're one voice as a former NFL player. Here's another voice as a former <laughs> NFL player, our own Ryan Clark. Hell yeah, he's going to break the record. He is going to throw for more than 55 touchdowns. He is going to keep getting better. There will be those touch passes to Tyreek Hill where he scores touchdowns. You will throw screens like we've seen Travis Kelsey do many times, Tyreek Hill do many times. He has playmakers all around him to put on top of his amazing talent. Okay, and by the way, the reason we're asking, because he's thrown the most p- touchdown passes through the first two right. weeks in the Super Bowl mm-hmm. era, and the year that Peyton Manning broke the record in 2013, he had a paltry nine right. after the first two weeks. Uh, Mahomes has got ten. I love me some Ryan Clark. Hell yeah, he's no, going to break it. it. You can book it. Right. We're on the Mahomes train, baby, and one day you're going to wake up and say, I wish I had been on with you. Whatever. What's Shocker. next? Khalil Mack has been the MVP through the first two weeks of the season. Book it. Wait, the MVP of the league yeah, overall? Of the league. No, yep. he hasn't. I mean, that's either been Mahomes or, or Fitzpatrick. You want to say defensive MVP? I'll give you. Uh, you know, he doesn't lead in sacks. Von Miller does with four, but he's got a touchdown already. The pressures that he's had, the impact that he's had uh, for the Bears. But MVP for the league first two weeks? No, no, I'm not booking that. You can book it. You Let's book go. It. You're so hypocritical. All you do is talk up Mahomes that he's the man, and now you're saying I think he's Mac great. Is, is better. I think Mac. Look, I you should love this from me oh, as yeah. a former defensive tackle. I am more than just fantasy football viewing and appreciating. I I see the little things that Khalil Mack is doing besides the big splash plays. I see the stunts that they he runs for other people. I see the pressure he creates which allows other players to get sacks as well. I'm not I'm not statastic here, Golik. I'm not just looking at the numbers he puts up. I'm looking at the value Whatever. he brings to everybody else on the defensive line. Whatever. You can book it. Khalil Who's Mack has been the best now? player in the NFL Whatever. through two weeks. Okay. What's next? Time for one more. Josh Gordon will lead the Patriots in receiving touchdowns this season. Book it? Uh, no, I'm not going to book that. Uh, I don't even know how much you know. I, how much you play? Will stay healthy? He's got the hammy already. He's got obviously the off field issues. I think it'll be either Gronkowski or Chris Hogan that will lead in touchdown reception. I want to book it, but I can't. I yeah. think it's still going to be Gronk. We yeah. teased this one, so Sanzik says we got to get it in 30 seconds. What is it? Jimmy Butler will be a New York Nick this season. Book it. 
No, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I'm not going to book that. No, I think he'll end up out in L.A. They got the two slots there. I think uh, he could be one of them and then see if Kawhi Leonard ends up out there. Listen, I have no horse in this race, so you can book it. You can book it. Just Wait, to play the sounder. Way to play along. Listen, Job if I don't you. have a strong feeling, I'm always going to say book it just so we can say you can book it. Golick and Wingo. It was all sort of one big giant yeah. jello mold. It's very interesting where that went. We're delighted to be joined this morning by Kate Fagan, who does a great job for us on a number of fronts. She's a writer for ESPNW and does great work on Outside the Lines. You see on a variety of shows as well mm-hmm. as Around the Horn. Uh, Kate, first of all, your reaction to what the NBA specifically didn't do in this situation. Did they get it right? Yeah, I, I actually was not concerned or upset that the NBA didn't suspend Mark Cuban or take that punishment any further. I mean, there's there a lot of reasons why I felt that way. One was sitting with that interview with, with Rachel Nichols as a human and watching it and actually asking myself the question, does that look like someone, Mark Cuban, does that look like someone who truly is contrite and truly is someone who didn't know on a really deep level what was going on, going on in his organization? And the answer that I came to with that question was, yes, he did look like a guy who I believe did not know the full extent of what was happening. Now we can talk about whether we, we think he should have know more and certainly the answer to that would have been I think he would agree is yes but I think we also have to ask ourselves like what would a suspension of Mark Cuban look like I mean we're sitting here in the sports world and we're about to come off of the suspension of Urban Meyer at Ohio State and I don't think a lot of us are sitting here thinking that suspension of Urban Meyer rocked the world and changed a lot and so I think when you look at a guy who steps forward and answered the questions in the way that can on a human level say like he knows what happened here. I think to me that the extent of that is all that I needed as, as someone in the sports world who, who has been a part for the last five years when you start with Ray Rice leading up to it of, of wanting the sports world to recognize more some of these things that have been happening. So, so okay, just so I'm clear in your position, and Rachel, by the way, feels the same way from you. She said yeah. so after doing the interview, the perception that it, it, it appeared that there was actual contrition and an openness to have this thing sort of mm-hmm. laid out and do, and have the NBA or whatever league do whatever is necessary is is an important part of this. Yeah, it is an important part. And, and you know, it's really interesting, Trey, because I'm on that show with you here, and probably throughout my ESPN career, before I would ever go on a show, I would have been on Twitter nonstop and allowed that to form some layer of my opinion on a sports topic. I've actually purposely not been on Twitter lately solely because I've seen that that forum has – changed and altered how I might answer a question or form an opinion because you kind of see where the majority is leaning. And I haven't done that for this story. And that's interesting to me because the opinion I'm offering right here right now could be vastly different than the one you might see that's formulating online. But it was important to me to say, okay, what have, what do I know about the NBA having covered it? What do I know about Mark Cuban having covered him? Same as Rachel Nichols. What did I see from that interview and from his behavior afterwards? And the place I landed was, I've seen all the things that we've been asking for in the sports world from someone who is tangentially related to this kind of bad behavior. I mean, we can't keep changing the goalposts on what we're asking of people who are not the sole bad actors in a situation. But in the case of Mark Cuban, as I mentioned, it's like tangentially related, where we wish he had done more, but he's not the bad actor. We can't keep changing the goalposts. And I think I saw him step to the plate and do the things that a couple of years ago I would have asked other people in his position to do, and they didn't do. Along those lines, we're talking to Kate Fagan on the Shell Penzo performance line. A lot of people are on Twitter, and a lot of Uh-oh. people, Kate, are making the comparison to Urban Meyer. So let, let, let me say what they're saying. They're saying, okay, Urban Meyer didn't isn't accused of any of the things like that went on in Dallas of doing those things. He got suspended for not following the process or not being upfront about some of the process that went on and not doing enough. Mark Cuban who wasn't involved in any of the things that went on, and as you said, stood up and took a responsibility for it, but did in fact, did in fact have a chance to do something to either Chris Hyde or Earl Sneed through emails and didn't fire these guys, and Earl Sneed with with the domestic violence twice, and he didn't fire the guy. So he really did nothing, came out after and said I was wrong. So it sounds like, People are saying that those like you and Rachel Nichols are saying, well, because you admitted it, cool. You know, we're not going to punish you for it. 
But they did do something wrong there, and, and, and Urban Meyer got suspended for it, and Mark Cuban did not. Do, do you see the, the difference there? Yeah, I mean, I, I see the overlap there. I think for me there's a couple key differences in that with the Urban Meyer story, one of the key turning points was him standing up at media day and whether he was dissembling or outright lying or was just confused about the timeline, suggesting that he knew nothing about something that he obviously knew deeply and was directly connected to. It was in someone that he saw every day. Whereas in the Mark Cuban situation, though, I, you know, I read the report and you do see opportunities where he could have fired some of these bad actors. He was not sitting around each of those guys day in and day out, which to me leaves more plausibility that Mark Cuban did not know really on an intrinsic level what that culture was like on the business side. That to me is a key difference when I look at the two. And I also, I mean, it's not as if Mark Cuban has gone without punishment here. And I know the financial, the financial punishment is when you look at his overall worth is, is a minuscule amount, but he's, I mean, the reputational hit here to me is also an important one. And that I think we've changed how we, at least I have changed how I viewed Mark Cuban as the owner of the Mavs. I mean, there's, there's trust loss in terms of what I thought he was about when it came to the Mavs and, and now having to rebuild that. So I, that's what I see as the key differences. But again, um, Mike, you mentioning a Twitter landscape that I could be walking into a landmine here by not agreeing with what the overwhelming perception is in that medium. Well, listen, you're, you're certainly entitled to your oh, opinion. Yeah. Let's be oh, clear. Okay. We, yeah. we know what the Twitter world <laughs> yeah. is like. The, 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 yeah. Twitter, the, the Twitter mob, some of you like that that scene from The Simpsons where they all come with pitchforks yeah. just on a daily basis and, 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 <laughs> and fire with something else. So as Kate Fagan is with us, does a great job for us on ESPN, uh, ESPNW and is also uh, does a great job on Outside the Line and other shows. Now that we've sort of gone through this mess, what's the standard going forward? What what do you think the NBA, and specifically the commissioner's office and Adam Silver, is saying to the next person that maybe finds themselves in this situation? The NBA is a really unique case for me because they've built up, and I think most sports fans, when they look at the NBA, see this. like They've built up so much goodwill with how strongly they've handled a lot of infractions over the years, and even even more than that, how they have equipped their players to have voices on really important topics in our landscape. And that's very different than other organizations and other leagues. And so when I look at the NBA and the way they've handled this, I do think to myself, look, this is an organization that I've agreed with on so many ways that they've handled things. And then therefore, if this is what, they, if this, if this is what they've come to on Mark Cuban, then, then I'm going to probably side with that's probably the, the, you know, the best way at this moment to handle it. Now, the, the question to me is, like, what is this? You know, what has the NBA done here that sets some sort of precedent for the future? The, the more pressing question to me is how, as like the sports world, sports culture, that sports media and fans, like, how? Where? When are we going to land in a place when we actually come to some sense of like stability and justice and how we're handling these situations? Because we've gone from five years ago, Ray Rice, where the whole point was to get people to pay attention. This stuff mattered. To now, where I'm a little worried that we're we're out of control in our response to it. So what I'm looking at more is like, when are we going to land in a more stable place that we understand how to interact with these types of issues instead of going swinging the pendulum all the way over to like the kind of mob mentality that we can often see here. That middle ground sometimes is the most elusive thing to find, but yeah. hopefully yeah. we're swinging back toward hopefully that now with each one of these cases and how they're adjudicated yeah. uh, by the league and the people involved. Hey, and, Kate. And, yeah, as we let you go, Kate, uh, Trey, we always goof around on the show of that yeah. I don't read a lot of books. Yeah. You know the last book I read? Yeah. What Made Rad- Maddie Run? Yeah. Book by Kate Fagan. Oh, and, and I'll, I'll say again. Thanks, Kate, let, I, let me just tell you, I don't think you know what a compliment that it's is. true. I mean, I, I, literally, I, he reads <laughs> comic books and that's it. And I know it's been out for a, 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 a year or so or a couple of years. I, I'm not sure the, the exact amount of time, but I, w- I would say that is must read. Well, that, when was the last time you read a book? You know, so that's pretty much how we know. I know it was your book. I just don't remember when I read it. <laughs> and let me put it this way. He's probably good for the rest of this decade. Great book, though. Uh, <laughs> great book, Kate. Listen, hey, Kate, yeah. we really appreciate you being on with us this morning on a very important topic. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Golick and Wingo. Let's not expect too much. There's only one person out there that's expecting way too much out of this guy too early. We know who that is. It's his father. When it comes to hiring, you don't have time to waste. You need help getting to your short list of qualified candidates fast. That's why you need Indeed.com. Post a job in minutes, set up screener questions, then zero in on qualified candidates using an intuitive online dashboard. 
And when you need to hire fast, accelerate your results with sponsored jobs. New users can try for free at Indeed.com slash podcast. That's Indeed.com slash podcast. Terms, conditions, and quality standards apply. Stu Gatz from the Dan Levitar with Stu Gatz joins us. All right, Stu. Stu, how nervous are you tonight? How nervous are you? Your Jets are a three-point underdog going into Cleveland. I am, uh, I'm always nervous, Trey. I mean, the Jets play a football game. It doesn't matter who they're playing, what night they're playing on, what time they're playing, what field they're playing on. I am a nervous wreck headed into every single Jets game. And listen, you can say at this point, it's fair to say, right? The Browns are due. I mean, they are. If ever a team was due for a victory, it would be the Browns at home on a Thursday night, nationally televised game, isolated game. The entire world is watching them and they're playing a pathetic New York Jets team and organization. Like, it is ripe for the taking for the Cleveland Browns tonight, so I'm very nervous. Uh, And the bad part is, is if your Jets lose, you you end up being the answer to a trivia question. The Browns' first win since forever, and what team did the Browns beat to unlock the coolers to let Bud Light (laughs) flow freely in the city of Cleveland? Right. Yes, the Jets are the answer to all the bad trivia questions (laughs) out there, Mike. It is always, just always guess Jets, and you'll have like a 75% chance of being right if you guess the Jets, you know? Uh, yeah, so, uh, so, okay, let's take whatever happens tonight out of the equation. Obviously, after the big win Monday night, there were high hopes for the Jets in the home opener, and, you know, (laughs) they didn't do it. However, I gotta say, Stu, watching that game, my impressions of Sam Darnold were no less tempered or my 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 perception of him didn't change in the loss as it did after the win. Yeah. I, I think you really have found the guy here. I, I do too, Trey. I, and this season really, it's not about the Jets and whether or not they make the playoffs or, you know, if they can go on some sort of magical run. It's all about finding out whether or not you have a quarterback. And so uh, I am I am completely with you, Trey. Like through two games, Sam Darnold has been, uh, he's been impressive. And listen, he's bounced back from adversity. He had the pick six, his first play of his career, and bounced back from that. And, you know, he says all the right things. He does all the right things. And so I'm encouraged. Listen, here's the problem with the Jets. They don't have any wide receivers. And so what Sam Darnold allows them to do, the defense is pretty solid. The offensive line is okay. The running back's okay when you talk about Crowell and Powell. They don't have wide receivers. They don't have tight ends. And so what Sam Darnold allows them to do over the next four years because he's on that rookie contract, is it allows the Jets to go out and spend a ton of money on wide receivers, whatever else they think they need, to kind of support and spackle Sam Darnold here. So uh, it's really all about whether or not uh, you have a quarterback this year for Jet fans. It's not about wins and losses. It's about, hey, is Sam Darnold going to be the guy for the next 10 or 15 years? And I think two games through, I think Jet fans feel pretty comfortable in saying, hey, I think we found the quarterback. The beauty of this quarterback, unlike getting Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins, guys, landed in the perfect spot. They needed an upgraded quarterback. They have all the other pieces. They got Kirk Cousins. The Jets were going to offer him $90 million guaranteed, north of $90 million guaranteed to Kirk Cousins. They don't have all the surrounding pieces, so this actually worked out well because that rookie contract allows the Jets to go out and get free agents over the next four years. Absolutely right. And look, people are saying this is a must-win game for Cleveland, to which I say, dude, they haven't won in two years. Every game is a must-win yeah. game. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, that's the way it goes. But you look at the Jets yes. now, Stugatz, you look at this line, their schedule, okay? After Cleveland, at Jacksonville, home for the Broncos, mm-hmm. uh, home yeah. for the Colts, home for Minnesota, and then at Chicago. I mean, it, it's kind of like we need to get this one. Uh, yeah, if you're thinking about this season, then yes, you kind of need to get this one, right? To get yourselves to two and one. And then you have Jacksonville next week, as you pointed out, Trey, which is a loss. So the Jets would be at two and two. I can tell you right now, definitively, that game is a loss. Okay. Uh, and then from there, listen, it's not that difficult, but yes, if you want to try to put together some sort of season and get the best of both worlds, where as a Jet fan, you're excited because you get to watch this new, fresh, young quarterback every single week and find out if he's your guy for the next 10 or 15 years. If you want to combine that and be selfish, and most Jet fans are, combine that with a season in which they go on some sort of crazy, magical run, get themselves to a playoffs, maybe maybe win a game once they get to the playoffs, then yes, tonight they have to win tonight's game to get themselves to 2-1. and one. one and two Jets going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
Uh, no, you can basically say the season's over, but I don't care. I really don't, Trey. I do not care about the playoffs. I only care about whether or not we have a quarterback for the next 15 years. Stu, Stu, you have the right, you have the right thought process. Act like you don't care about this year. And if they do well, you can be pleasantly surprised and not let down again. It's perfect way to do it. It's the Stugatzian way of doing it. Let's move off the Jets, uh, because I don't feel like talking about them anymore. And yeah, let's get to your, <laughs> let's get, we're, we're talking about MVP candidates. A lot of people have Patrick Mahomes out there or Ryan Fitzpatrick, and we did book it. Our buddy here, Trey Wingo, had Khalil Mack in there. So I understand you have your own top five MVP candidates. I do. I have. I mean, listen, it's ridiculous that we're doing this. Now, Stanzik told me we're all going to do this, but I have my top five MVP candidates because I know Trey likes to do power rankings. I love that Trey loves to do power rankings. I don't care that Trey does them after the first week or second week of the season. It's never too early for power rankings. I have my power rankings through two weeks of NFL MVPs. Now, you guys did not prepare a list. That, we, that is we obvious, did, We right? did not. So we'll, we'll just react okay. to yours, and we'll do so wonderfully. Okay. So I'm going to list these uh, five through one. I should actually go up, because on my list, Trey, I like to do things. Our show likes to do things a little differently. You go five, four, three, two, one. I yeah. go one, two, three, four, five. Okay. okay? All right. So, but now we're so cross-pollinating. Five. This is, yeah, this is, you're on our show, so you're doing it our, our way, right? Yeah, fine, I'll do it your way. Would you, you like go. me to do it your way? You sure. Want? Okay, I'll do it your way. There okay, you go. At five, way. who I'm is gonna it? I'm going to do it your way. Number five, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, Fitzmagic. He's number five. Well, listen, he's at number five because I'm telling you, Todd Gurley should be in my top five. Spoiler alert, he's not. <laughs> so I put Fitzpatrick right at the fringe there because we know Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to revert back to being Ryan Fitzpatrick, and then I'll slide Todd Gurley back in. Okay? All right. All right. Number four. Number four, the Red Rifle. Andy Dalton. Whoa. He is number four through two weeks. The How ginger, about that? The ginger giant getting things done. Wow. I like it. Oh, nice. Giving Cincinnati nope. a little love, and they deserve it. They deserve some love. They do. Yep, they're two and oh. He's playing well. Kirk Cousins comes in at number three for me. Kirk Cousins comes in at number three. Interesting. I suspect he'll move up that list because I think the Vikings are the second best team in the NFL behind the Rams. So I have Kirk Cousins at number three. Number two is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is number two because Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback we've ever seen. Aaron Rodgers doing it on one leg. And imagine what the Packers would look like. You don't have to imagine. Think about what the Packers looked like last year without Aaron Rodgers. So he is number two. I suspect if he stays healthy, he'll probably move up there as well. (laughs) Number one, MVP, guys, okay? It is not a player. It's a coach. Oh, my. It is Andy Reid. For trading away Alex Smith because he had so much conviction in Pat Mahomes, who probably is the MVP on the field through two weeks of the NFL season. Uh, How about that? Uh, it's interesting, but you know who hates this list? Huh. Your, your entire show. Because uh, what does Dan – no, seriously, what does Dan always say? We sanctify these coaches. <laughs> we do this, blah, 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 blah. It's never about the coaches, right? That's the running mantra on your show. It is, but here's the thing. Like, I railed against Andy Reid all of last season, guys, because I was like, really? You're going to trade Alex Smith? Alex Smith for an unknown, an unknown at quarterback in Patrick Mahomes. I dared Andy Reid to do it, and Andy Reid took me up on my dare. Dare accepted, and he won the dare. So I blasted Andy Reid for doing it because I thought Alex Smith was a good quarterback. Uh, Alex Smith is an okay quarterback. Patrick Mahomes is a Hall of Fame quarterback. So Andy Reid, good job. For having the conviction in your beliefs to get rid of Alex Smith, a good quarterback will get you to the playoffs, but he will not get you to the Super Bowl. This guy can get you to the Super Bowl and win Super Bowls. Not many coaches would do that because they're all coaching for their jobs. Andy Reid is not. He did it. Good job by him. He's the MVP. It was a great move by him because yeah. I was I was holding off on it as well, and I'll, I'll hold off on the Hall of Fame quarterback talk as well. I mean, you're jumping into the pool like everybody else. Uh, well, let's give it a little bit of time before we make the bust. You know who's not on your One list? One more week? No. Uh, you know who's not on okay. your list and should be on your list and maybe up at top? And, and, and you, you, for, Stu Gotts, for as much as you go outside the box, you picked all quarterbacks. Can that be any more boring? You picked you, Andy Reid. Oh, all right. I picked a coach, Mike. Whatever. You, you want to go outside the box? And this isn't even <laughs> outside the box. Who should be number one or in the top five? Nobody wants to put Michael Thomas in there. Michael Thomas has point. 28 receptions in two weeks. He is on pace for 224 receptions. The league record is 143. He's not going to get 224, but he sure as hell can get 143. He's been targeted 30 times. 
and caught 28 balls. It's not like defend, defenses don't know the ball is going to go to him, yet he still finds a way to come down with the ball. Got a Hall of Famer thrown it to him, I get it, but no love for a wide receiver, Stugatz. No, I mean, listen, that, that is fair. Um, that is fair, Mike. Here's the problem with the Saints, though. I mean, the Saints lost that first game, right? And then they struggled with the Browns at home. So I have to take, you know, winning into consideration here. And Michael Thomas, I mean, I'm sorry, Mike, in that offense with Drew Brees throwing and Mark Ingram is out. They're not running the ball as much as they were last year. Michael Thomas is fantastic. He is amazing, but. He is not a top five MVP candidate. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Mike, Why? I thought you'd be upset I didn't put an offensive or def, a defensive lineman in there. I mean, not a wide receiver. Why, why, why do you think he's not in the top five? <laughs> Michael Thomas? Yeah. I mean, listen, if there's an MVP on the Saints, it's going to be come, I don't, he's not even the best player on his own team, Dre. It's Drew Brees or Alvin Kamara. I don't even think Michael Thomas is the best player in his own huddle. Oh, 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 do you I think know- Andy Dalton's the best player on his team? You better not. Uh, I do right now through, through, through two weeks. I do right. Yes, I do. I think Andy Dalton, you go back and look at Dalton's stats a couple of years ago. When oh, the, you're when losing the us Bengals now. Bengals were actually yeah. a decent wow. team. Hold on. He was Hold pretty on. good. No, he was pretty good. And now they got Joe Mixon. No, no, you cannot do that. Andy Dalton is 10 times more valuable to his team than Michael Thomas is to the Saints. Get out of here with that. Look, look. There's Andy a million Dal- guys Andy, catch. Andy Dalton's, There's a million Andy guys Dalton's, catching Andy balls. Dalton's played great. There's no question about it. I'm not, when I'm not, I'm not doing this to denigrate, but if you watch that game against the Browns, Michael Thomas was the, was the one that made sure they did whatever they could offensively. I mean, you couldn't stop him. You could not stop. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Drew Brees, and you can make that argument, and that's fair. But I don't think you can just dismiss what Michael Thomas has done over the first two weeks of the season. All right, I won't dismiss him. Mike, if it makes you feel better, if you want to expand it out to a top six, I will put Michael Thomas in. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You know, don't, don't patronize me. I hate you now. So, never mind. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about it. I love you. <laughs> All right, qu- quickly. Quickly, uh, to basketball, your thoughts. Do you want the Knicks to be trading or the Nets, uh, to be trading? You, I know you're a Knicks fan though, so do you want the Knicks to trade for Jimmy Butler? No, uh, I don't care about the Nets. Uh, the New York Knicks, um, no, I don't want them trading for Jimmy Butler. Listen, you have Porzingis and there are rumors that Kyrie Irving wants to be in New York next year. I'd like to explore that. Jimmy Butler doesn't win you anything. And no, if I'm the Knicks, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in getting a guy along with Kyrie Irving to go with Porzingis headed into next year. I don't think Butler, Kyrie Irving, Porzingis is enough to win you a championship. I'm not sure there is an equation to win a championship uh, as long as Golden State stays together. So, uh, But I do not want to see Jimmy Butler. I think the, the Knicks need to aim higher than that. I think Kyrie Irving, Porzingis, and someone else is where I'd like to see the Knicks go. Uh, next year. I do not want Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler does not win you or any team a single... Jimmy Butler, your team is good if Jimmy Butler is your second or third best player, All right, which Stu is Gatz. why I think you should probably stay in Minnesota. But if Jimmy Butler is your best player, you're not going anywhere. All right, Stu, real quickly, let's get through some picks for this weekend. Uh, okay. to, to to pick at, obviously, you're the team that you follow. Jets, Browns, uh, Browns minus three. Who are you taking? Uh, I am going to go here... Man, this is tough. I'm going to take the Cleveland Browns. There's no way wow. I'm going to take the Jets here. Uh, okay. So I'm going to take the Cleveland Browns. This is what I actually hope I lose, guys. Uh, I'm going to take the Cleveland Browns here, uh, minus three. All right, how about this one? Oakland at Miami, Dolphins three-point favorite. Okay, I'm going to go with the Dolphins here. I think the Dolphins are actually pretty good. Adam Gase, Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill is healthy now. Uh, I'm going to take the Dolphins here to win by 14 points. I thought we had a contest going on, but we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, we're going to. We we, we got we're, okay. we're clock integrity. Okay, so then okay. we're going to pick this one on Monday night. We're going to go first here on these two. Pittsburgh at okay. Tampa. Uh, Mike, who do you like? Oh, I mean, I can't believe Pittsburgh's favored in this game. Yeah, that does seem how odd. ridiculous is that? I, well, I, you know what that tells you? It tells you the sharps and Vegas where the money going. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? I'm That's going with Tampa. You. I'm I'm going to keep riding the Fitz Magic train. Listen, a lot of me wants to take Pittsburgh because this would be the classic set scenario in which Ryan Fitzpatrick's magic runs out. Pittsburgh finds himself, but I'm telling you, I think the Bucks have found something in the chemistry. I'm going with with the Bucks on this one. Stu, what about you? I'm going Steelers here. I mean, if we're going to have a contest where if I win, your guys, uh, my guys come up and invade Trey's golf course. If I win, you guys uh, come down and invade my golf course. I have Love to go it. opposite of you guys. I'm going to take the Steelers. I do play. like that because the first two picks, I agree with you. I'm going yeah. Browns and I'm going Miami as well. So we're only going to yeah. be different on the one I, this time I, I around. I am as well. So the swing, the swing state, the right. swing vote this week 
Is Pittsburgh at Tampa? And we have to make till Monday night to find out. Don't so forget when, good. when you lose this bet, you have to provide all drinks on the golf course. Yes, that's very important. That is fine. No, the entire day is on me if I lose, and the entire day is on Trey if you guys end up losing. Uh, by the way, Mike, and and I apologize for this. There is a list that Michael Thomas is number one on for me. Okay, it is guys in sports. Okay, he is number one, firmly entrenched on this list. Guys in sports who look like they are good in the bedroom. That is it. Number one on my list. Go ahead. I dare you to debate it. We talk about it on our show all the time. He just looks like he's good at it, Mike. That's it. In fact, football is his second best. Sport. I would love someone to say that about me that better than any kind of anything I did athletically. Yeah. I would like that. Well, we're still winning. Yes, yeah. All right. And thanks. Yeah. Appreciate that, Stu Gotts. We'll see how this Woo. plays out. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Stu. See you. Okay. See you, guys. This has been the best of Golick and Wingo podcast. You can listen or subscribe on the ESPN app, Apple Podcasts, or just ask your smart speaker to play Golick and Wingo. Plus, you can check the guys out live weekday mornings from 6 to 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio and on ESPN News. Guys, let's be real. When you look good, you feel good. At the JCPenney wardrobe sale, you can get 50% off select men's suits, separate sport coats, dress pants, and accessories. Plus, select dress shirts, buy one, get one free. Raise your game with Collection by Michael Strahan. All the right looks to take your style to the next level. Also, save an extra 20% off with your JCPenney credit card and coupon or extra 15% off with any other method of payment. Hurry in. JCPenney, style and value for all. Pricing and coupon valid 913 and 923. Credit offer subject to credit approval. Some exclusions and restrictions apply. See store at jcp.com for